Can you guys hear us in the back? Yeah? Okay, cool. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the serverless Drupal room. If you brought any servers with you, please place them outside the door. This is the serverless room. <laughs> um, this, this presentation is going to be very conversational. Uh, myself and Salim, and we'll do our introductions here shortly, we, we talked about this. We did this for real, and we went back and forth, and I'm like, I don't like that answer. Oh, did you mean this? You didn't mean that? What did you mean? So I, I, I interrogated him. I beat him up pretty hard, and uh, we got a lot of stuff, a lot of information going on in here. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, we're good there. Um, but what does, any of that, what does any of that have to do with why you're here and, and what's going on? Uh, quite a bit, and we're going to find out why. Let's find out together. Starting with me, that's right, I'm the first one. So I've uh, been in the Drupal community in my 15th year, uh, loving it. I came in at Drupal 5 and thought that was so powerful. Ha! It was at the time, but uh, we're doing much better these days. Uh, from the Midwest, uh, Indiana, uh, happily married, four kids, loving, loving it all. Uh, Synaptic Blue is the company I started. It's just a solopreneur, me, so you, you probably haven't heard of it. And all these pictures real quick. I did uh, have a meet and greet with Red Al Yankovic. I do play guitar. That's uh, me running a spotlight. Um, I'm also a stage, journeyman stagehand, if anybody cares. So that's kind of fun. And uh, I used to be younger. Uh, something else you can learn from these pictures. I, I, used, I used to have hair. But uh, that is me. Okay, I'm, uh, it's, uh, if it was just Doug, it'd be a comedy hour, so. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going off a script, but. Uh, <laughs> Are you saying it's too soft? I just heard to make sure you the mics. Okay. Yeah. So, so I have to tell you, it's, it's ironic, but I don't care that much about serverless. Uh, what, I, what I care about are the benefits of serverless. And I have to tell you, some of the, one of the main benefits of serverless is that uh, we were able to get up to 90% savings on hosting from using serverless uh, for some of the clients. Um, so this session is more than anything else, it's a, it's a case study on how we were able to take uh, a $1 million uh, hosting bill down to 127K. Um, and, uh, and, and it was not by rewriting Drupal or re-engineering anything, it was, it was by taking uh, a reference architecture, uh, AWS reference architecture, and implementing that for the client, and uh, and this is this is something that anybody here can can deploy and use. So we're going to talk about that in in this session. So uh, I'm Salim Lakani, and for the last six years, I've been uh, I've been automating uh, AWS with different clients, and DevPanel the company is, uh, is a point-and-click control panel that automates Drupal on AWS and uh, automates Drupal deployments on AWS. And just to give you an example, uh, one of the things we did was uh, recently was we did in 17 minutes, we did a deployment which was taking one of our clients, uh, I think it took him four months and three people to set up. So, uh, so they, they signed the same day we did the <laughs> demo. So, yeah. But today we're not going to talk about DevPanel. We're going to talk about uh, how you can get started with serverless, and uh, and we'll walk you through the uh, pre-built reference architecture, and hopefully you'll be able to save a ton of money yourself. Um, and I realize some some people here might be you know allergic to AWS, so. Uh, but, but the patterns and the, and the concepts we're going to talk about over here uh, will, will apply to all platforms. So, uh, so we'll, we'll keep it at that level. So. All right, so the next slide is all about Doug. So, uh, so what the heck is serverless? Okay, I, I hope we'd all have the same answer, but maybe not. Um, if you don't see a server, then it must be serverless. There is no server here. This is a robot. And think about it. That's, it's, it's efficient. It scales. It's... Um, the cost is reasonable, and uh, customer service is, or customer satisfaction is much higher that way. You too can experience serverless today, today, downtown at Top Burmese in Portland. They have robots bringing your serverless, bringing your food. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, take a screenshot. <laughs> I, I ate there in February. It's very tasty. Okay, so if, uh, oh, and up. if you go and mention my name, they will, uh, they'll say, who? 
So, when, okay, so you can talk in that. Thank you. Thank you. So, when you, uh, so when it comes to Drupal and, and we talk about serverless, what is the first thing you think of? Lambda, right? What is the first thing you guys think of, right? Lambda? Yeah? Okay. So, so that's mainly what people, you know, most of the people think of, right? But to build, uh, to actually run Drupal on Lambda would take massive re-engineering, right? And, and, and the benefits of, of running it on Lambda would be the same as, you know, I think we can get the same benefits of running it uh, on Lambda from other, using other technologies that are already available on Drupal. So, and, and if we run it using some of the other serverless technologies, you, you'd be able to run Drupal without re-engineering it, you'd be able to use all the, uh, all the modules that you like and so on, but for that, there's already a pattern that's already built by AWS, and that's, that pattern looks like this. So, so <laughs> I'm immediately not happy. Okay. Um, <laughs> subnets, Aurora's, Fargates, uh, I'm lost here. Uh, I don't have a comp side degree, and I'm not AWS certified, so I'm, I'm kind of done at this point. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to go do something else. Yeah, so, so it might, uh, I know this, it looks complicated, but it's not, uh, uh, so, uh, so I, I was going to say, don't, don't leave. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll walk you through this. It's not that complicated, and it's a pre-built infrastructure that you can actually deploy uh, using, using scripts. The repo is out there, and uh, you can actually download the repo and run the scripts, and it'll deploy it for you. Yeah. Uh, this is what they call a reference architecture. And it was built by uh, AWS DevOps experts. And you don't need to know Kubernetes. You don't need to know uh, DevOps. You don't need to have a, a degree in AWS. This is something you can actually deploy yourself, download it, and deploy yourself. So and it follows all the best practices. So uh, It's built on technologies like this, uh, these type, kind of technologies. This is. Uh, AWS Fargate, which is their compute, uh, serverless compute engine, ECS, which is uh, Elastic Container Service, EKS, their Elastic uh, Kubernetes Service, Aurora Serverless Database, and uh, the EFS, which is their uh, Elastic uh, File System, their shared file system. So you can use these technologies to actually uh, build serverless uh, Drupal infrastructure. So the serverless infrastructure diagram that you saw uses some of these, uh, most of these technologies, I, I should say. And, and with these, when you deploy Drupal, with these, you're essentially deploying containers and, and the platform takes care of all the scaling and the platform takes care of uh, all the infrastructure for you. So all you're, all you're doing is deploying containers. And the benefits of this, as we conversed back and forth for a long time, was no machines to maintain, which I was excited about. Platform provides computing resources as needed, which is related to you pay only for resources you're using, also exciting. Scalable on demand, gotta be. Flexibility and speed of deployments. I'm a developer, I like that. Extremely reliable and fully managed services. So winning all the way around. Do you have any examples or case studies of this? Yes. So <laughs> Imagine this is, that. Yeah. So this is a, this is a project uh, this is a proof of concept project we had done for uh, Voice of America last year. And I use this because it's, uh, it, it was the largest savings. I mean, we'll go into clients, we'll save them, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 50, 60,000. But this was, this was the largest savings that we were able to demonstrate. Um, so, so we'll use this and I'll show you some of the numbers here. Um, and the, this was this was really big. So, this is um, now, now how, how, how big is the project? Two, two billion, two billion hits and fifty websites. Did you develop everything yourself, or how much of it was out of the box, or how did that go? So, so we had, uh, we we had to do some development with them. We worked with AWS on this. So this is something that was bigger than what we had done before. Uh, so we worked with AWS on 
on the architecture, on everything, but we, we brought to the table, we brought the, the whole dev test live infrastructure from our control panel, uh, but we had to work with them to do tag-based deployments, to do, um, well, what else were we doing? Blue-green, Blue -green, uh, the ability to roll back uh, deployments and things like that. And when we did that, it was available to everyone. Um, but this, is, this was something that was, that was really huge. It was uh, two billion hits per month. Uh, and that's, that was massive. That was, that was just massive. Um, they had 50 total websites in different languages. And they had four main sites on, on Drupal. Uh, their main site was getting uh, about a billion hits. Uh, oh, yeah, I think close to a billion hits. Um, or I think the, yeah, so, so we were actually planning on, on scaling this out to, we tested the infrastructure out to handle two billion hits, and they had 46 other legacy sites that they were trying to move, they were planning on moving to, to Drupal. Uh, for the four sites that were on Drupal, they were paying a million dollars in hosting. Um, and, and they had a single code base, and uh, they wanted to deploy all the sites from that single code base. So that was kind of the background on the project. So these are, these are some big numbers. So we had, uh, for this project, um, and, and like I said, we worked with AWS. We had, uh, we were able to get them down to about 127, 128 uh, uh, annual hosting bill. And it was with equal uh, traffic and load and uh, we used, for this we had used uh, on-demand servers or on-demand infrastructure and on-reserve uh, or reserved uh, infrastructure for pricing. So that was kind of the basic yeah, that, background. On that, that was actually over 86 or 87 percent, it said 80 percent, but that's, right. either one is great. Um, does that include the, the, the dev panel portion of fees or your, your stuff? Uh, right, so, so that didn't include the dev panel fees, that was just the AWS fees. Um, our, our platform fees are based on, on the savings we create for our clients. So the more savings we create for them, the, the more, you know, the, so we're incentivized to create more savings. So we take a percentage of the savings. So that, that's, a, that's a good question. So, uh, so some people in this room are probably thinking they're going to go back to work next week, talk to the IT director or CTO or somebody and say, hey, listen to me. I can, I can severely impact you and make some cr crazy savings here. You know, they're, they're going to be excited perhaps hopefully by this. But they're going to get a question back to them like, but does it perform? Right. So that was one of the things, the questions they had as well. So we had to do load testing, and, uh, and this was, you know, it passed all the load testing. We, uh, we did both cold uh, testing and under load, we did testing for spikes. And so we stress tested it, and we targeted the origin, which is passing the caching and, and going back to the origin. And for performance testing, we used, uh, we used uh, web page test and lighthouse for doing performance for, for as, as tools. And uh, we got comparable performance uh, with the production. We got a little better than, than their production uh, performance, but you know, that, that could have been tweaked, I guess, but so. And then the, the whole thing was done using, the entire thing was done using auto-scaling. So, so we, monitored, uh, we monitored the clusters, the clusters went up and down, all the infrastructure auto-scaled correctly, and you know, it gracefully went, uh, uh, handled all this. Auto-scaling is nothing new. People might be falling asleep. Is this special auto-scaling or just auto-scaling, auto-scaling? Is this special? No. If, if, Right, so if you've worked with, uh, with the cloud infrastructure and if you've done auto-scaling, then this is just normal auto-scaling, so. Yeah, I'm not easy on this guy. No, so, no fluff, right. no fluff. Um, so we can, we can go into some questions that we get. This is, these, these are some of the questions we get uh, you know, most of the time when we talk to clients. Like, what is, what is auto-scaling, how it works? So in auto-scaling, when you have like fixed capacity, and your traffic goes beyond that capacity, your site will crash. Um, and if you're buying capacity at, at peak page views or you're paying for your peak 
uh, traffic for holiday season or whatever it is, right? Uh, the rest of that capacity is essentially wasted and you're paying for it all the time. So, so auto scaling uh, essentially adjusts for that and uh, you're, you're having the systems uh, essentially adjust the traffic for, for you and follows the, your, your traffic up and down uh, and the infrastructure will adjust according to your traffic. So, um, so yeah, even getting started in this, you know, the, the diagram, I'm not certified, etc. I wasn't sure where the front door was to this building. So to get started, this is, this is where you would, uh, this is something that you can go to. This is the infrastructure. Uh, here's the repo you can download and, and essentially follow the readme. So the first thing I have to tell you is this is infrastructure as code and it's built around uh, AWS's cloud formation uh, template. And this is very similar to uh, Terraform, if you've heard of Terraform. So if you want to run CloudFormation, you can essentially, uh, you know, Google how to run CloudFormation. It gives you the instructions on this repo. Uh, but essentially, just follow the readme. And you will be able to, to deploy this infrastructure. Uh, this URL is different. Uh, and this URL actually walks you through step by step on what the this diagram does and how it's set up. Are the slides on our, our, our session node yet? Right. So I've put a link to all the slides on the session notes, so hopefully you'll be able to get to that. On, on the DrupalCon website. Right. We shouldn't assume people know what a node is. Right. <laughs> so in this architecture, you can see that it's got um, it's got far, we're using Fargate to run uh, these containers. You've got the three different regions. So you've got Drupal containers running in three different regions and that gives you, uh, that gives you the load balancing and that gives you the redundancy for, for running Drupal. It gives you the multiple zones. So if any of the containers goes down, you've still got the website up and running. Um, and you've got the serverless Aurora database cluster running in the background. That automatically scales. You don't have to manage the cluster. Uh, you don't have to set it up or anything. You've got the EFS, which, which is serving your code, and which is the elastic file system that's serving your code and your files. And you've got the load balancer up front, which is distributing the load to all the three different regions, so, uh, or all the three different uh, availability zones. So. So this is all running in one region, and uh, and that's what this what this uh, diagram uh, illustrates. And the nice thing about this reference architecture is that it can be extended. So if you're looking to run uh, things like Memcache or Redis, or if you want to add S3 buckets to it, it's very easy to extend this reference architecture. And this is one of the things that we had done on the project as well. So uh, we had taken this reference architecture. So we, we had done something very similar to this. Uh, and we had extended this. This is when we were working with AWS. So we took some like this and then we extended it uh, with Solar and with CloudFront and, uh, and, the, and the WAF. The WAF is the, is the firewall. So that protects you from, uh, from, from hacking attempts and things like that. The, the, the CloudFront also comes with uh, DDoS protection, so it'll protect the website from uh, DDoS, it's basic DDoS protection, and then they also sell like advanced DDoS protection, so. Question there, so standing up the initial architect reference architecture is a bit turnkey in that regard, but adding a Memcached or adding a Redis or Apache Solar or whatever, th that's gotta be a little more complicated than just turnkey. Right, so. Yeah, sorry, I stepped away from it. <laughs> So, so, yeah, so the question was, yeah, if you want to add the additional components, you, you have to work with either AWS or somebody that knows AWS, um, for example, but, but they're not that hard to deploy. For example, the WAF, uh, there's a, there's a pre-built recipe to deploy a WAF. Uh, you, can, you can essentially walk through it on AWS. So if you Google for AWS WAF implementation, it'll give you, you know, it takes 
half an hour or a couple hours maybe to, to deploy it, and it's a, it's a pre-built recipe again um, that you can use to deploy that. So. Um, how else can we go serverless uh, can Drupal scale to zero? And what about small sites? If your site's small, are we, are we, is it in the conversation? Right, okay. So, so again, those are, those are all good questions, and we, and we get those um, a lot. Um, so there's, there's different patterns of going serverless. The pattern we saw is, is well-suited for, this was the multi-AZ pattern. The multi-AZ pattern is you're running Drupal in multi and in, in different uh, like data centers within a region. And uh, it's a reference architecture. It's good for, you know, it runs in one region and it's good for most Drupal sites. But if you're running, uh, if you're running large mission critical sites, there's also multi-region deployments, which is, which is beyond the scope of this presentation, but it uses some of the newer technologies that are out with AWS, and we're building those out for some clients now. So you can actually run, uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but AWS, some of the AWS regions went down last, last year. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's, yeah. So that's when we got, that's when we started getting requests for doing multi-regional deployments. Uh, so now you can run Drupal and other applications in multi-regions that way. Um, and then for static sites, there's, uh, there's another pattern for running static sites. And, and this is something you can actually, you can actually, I, I've put out some links here um, if you want to check this out. For, there's a project for, uh, for AWS, I mean for Drupal called Tome, which I believe will work with, uh, it was set up for Drupal 8, I believe will work with Drupal 9 as well. And if you're hosting static sites on uh, AWS, you can, you know, it, it'll cost you one to three dollars a month. Or one, I would say one to five dollars. There's also another, uh, Another company out of uh, another company that actually does uh, uh, converts your Drupal sites into static sites. It's called Quant. They're called Quant CDN. So check out Quant CDN, and uh, we're partnering with them so that we can do dev test live and then convert the live sites into into static sites uh, at Dev Panel. But Quant CDN uh, can take your site wherever it's hosted and turn it into a static site, and then just host that. And that will allow you to turn off your production site and just host and serve out the, uh, the static site. And when you hear the phrase static site, uh, you can even think of, and many people do think of, corporate blogs and things where there's not a lot of interaction and whatnot going on. So if you're going to create a blog, even once a day, you could just shove it out to a static environment and not have any server. That'd be really serverless. Yeah. With static sites, your, your sites are uh, amazingly fast and, uh, and they become hack-proof. So, uh, so that's... That's really good if you don't, you know, if you don't want to keep, if you don't want to be on the edge of your seat, you know, when there's a patch that comes out and you want to run and patch it. So, uh, so if you convert it to static site, then you have some time to go patch your site. So. Yeah. Uh, online IDEs that the, didn't exist, now they do, and it's kind of all the rage. What's up with that? Yeah. So that's that's another good question. Is that if you're using if you're using uh, serverless, can you use online IDEs with it, right? Um, so AWS has a built-in IDE called Cloud9, and it gives you all the things like code autocomplete. It'll give you uh, multiple panels and code hinting and things like that. And there's a link here. You can go check it out. Uh, it supports over 40 languages. It's got an integrated debugger, your, your terminal, and uh, editing history, and chat, so you can actually do collaboration uh, with different uh, developers. File revision history, keyboard shortcuts, and, and all the bells and whistles. So I'm curious. Has anybody tried AWS Cloud9? Anybody? No? Yeah? Uh, hands up high, you like it. Middle, you don't. It's OK, wishy-washy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, give me an cool. endorsement. I'd love to. Yeah, All great. Right. Okay. One, so, one endorsement. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so CICD, you know, yeah. you, 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 you got to have it. Uh, are, we, are, are we boxing ourselves into some limitations or anything here? Yeah, that's another good question. Can we do CICD? So, so CICD is, uh, you can. What is CICD? Yeah. So, so 
CICD is continuous integration, continuous deployment. So you can actually do your, uh, we're building containers from, from your, if you're running on local and you want to you build your containers and deploy those, you can actually just integrate with GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab. Uh, you can bring in Jenkins or CircleCI and just build out containers and deploy those. So those, those work just fine. So uh, you, have, you have a flow you like, you can reproduce it rather seamlessly, it sounds yeah. like. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you can set up your own pipelines and build your containers and deploy them, so. Dig it. Um, yeah, all these questions are mine. I, just, I really interrogated the snot out of this guy and got these answers. Uh, my devs use local dev environments, some DDEV, Lando, Docsful, et cetera. Uh, I have Max PCs and Linux. Um, can, we, can we get started on day one? Yeah, so again, this is, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever, what we do is, is when, when we have, when we set up these environments, everyone essentially syncs up to a repo and then we deploy that repo. So again, it's the same CICD uh, deployment pipelines, but uh, yeah, everyone has their own local development environments and then they, uh, we just deploy it using CICD from that. So. So no limitations there. Uh, multiple remotes, uh, dev test and prod or dev test and live, you gotta have it, but sometimes you just need a couple extras to do some avant-garde crazy stuff. Is, is that moving heaven and earth or what? Yeah, and uh, it, it's, I, I, <laughs> I wanna say yes on that as well. It, it requires some setup, but yeah, you can, if you're deploying, if you're setting up CI CD, you can deploy containers, you can deploy different branches, you can deploy feature branches, you can deploy any branch you want, and you're essentially setting up uh, different container, you're deploying different containers to your environments. And that's, you know, uh, you've got, you've got in the cloud, you've got, instead of having a server, you're just deploying any number of containers, so. so no limitations there. Um, <laughs> and I, I got to this point of the show, uh, we had a discussion over for many months. So is this long term, am I gonna do this on day one, and am I good for six months, 12 months, 18 months? Is something gonna change, I'm gonna outgrow this, I gotta change again, what, what is the story on that? Yeah, so I, I, I guess you can outgrow it if, uh, you know, if you're going to outgrow Amazon or, <laughs> you know. uh, but, but yeah, um, you know, I, it, it scales, it automatically scales, so I, you know, I don't think there's a, there's a limit to outgrowing it. Um, I think the, the better question is, you know, is it what you're doing today, are you going to outgrow that or is that sustainable? So, so those are the questions you, I think that's the better question. So yeah. you outgrow what you're doing today. So. I remember that answer. I felt put in my place. Yeah, well, well, what are you doing now? Um, okay, so we gotta keep up with the times. It's not just monolithic Drupal sites. It's uh, decoupled and progressively decoupled sites. It's also not just Drupal. Decoupled WordPress sites are being deployed on these things. Any yeah. limitations there? Yeah, so, so this, is, this is good. It requires, this requires some work, but if you de deploy decoupled or progressively uh, decoupled sites, then it requires some work, but you've got two classes of containers and you've got, you've got Drupal that you can scale separately and you've got the front end that you can scale separately. So yeah, you can do that and you can do separate scaling for that as well, so. Sweet. Uh, server logs, pipeline logs, et cetera, that's been a bone of contention in some of my dev, log, dev operations. Do we have access yeah. to everything we want? Yeah, anybody use Splunk? Yeah, so it's uh, essentially you're, we, take, we take the logs and we put it out to another log aggregator. We'll use CloudFormation. I mean, you, we'll use CloudWatch for that, or uh, we'll use Splunk, or we'll use some other log, log aggregation. Sweet. There's open search as well, so that's, that's another new thing that we use. So there, there are some people doing this already. Um, is, is that considered serverless? Pantheon, not we are. Uh, platform SH, amazing. Is that yeah. serverless? Uh, it's is that serverless? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all yeah, it's all serverless. It's uh, uh, most of them are using serverless. I, Acquia is using I from yeah, Acquia is using a mix of it. So uh, you know, I think they're moving more and more to serverless. But uh, most of the other platforms are using serverless. Um, what you're paying for, I think, is you know, most of them charge you at the peak. Uh, plus, you know, you pay a margin. I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking it down. They have big infrastructure and stuff. Um, so, so they're charging you on the traditional model, which is you're paying at, at one capacity level. 
but on the back end, you know, they're, it's, it's all serverless. Their, their capacity, their infrastructure moves up and down uh, depending on the loads. So. And we did good. So we do have time for questions. Yeah. 20 minutes worth. Yeah. Sweet. So that was our conversation over many months, and I hope it looked a little natural, but uh, uh, that's what it was. Questions about serverless. You can reach out to us. Oh, yes. And then there's questions here, and there's questions on the Slack channel as well. So what, what questions do you guys have? And if you're interested in a boff, uh, just tweet out, you know, mention my name, Matt Doug Van, and we'll, we'll, we'll join you. Uh, we should probably put the wireless over here. Yeah. And invite individuals to approach the stage. Do not bite. Or, yeah. Or pass around. You know what? Sure. Uh, pretty basic question, but being in healthcare, right? I have we have uh, difficulties getting legal contracts with AWS. So you talked a lot about AWS. So have you tried to do serverless on Azure? And yeah. what's your experiences there as far as implementation and timeline? Yeah. So so we're we're working on porting over uh, our infrastructure and our implementations to Azure. Uh, we, we get that a lot, especially with the government clients and stuff, so we haven't done that yet. So that's a, we're, we're working toward it. If you're interested, you can contact us and we'll work with you, so. Sure. Um, we use a lot of um, Pantheon. Yeah. And um, it basically does um, all of these things um, really fast. And do not need to um, um, maintain a container and so on. It's so, which is more um, beneficial, really? Is this is this beneficial over Pantheon? I mean, if you want to, if you want to explore saving cost uh, over Pantheon, if you're, then then this is something to explore. But if you're happy with it, then then I would just stay with Pantheon. Like, there's nothing wrong with Pantheon at all. And in the case uh, study, they do, we had an organization, they do a very good job. Yeah, yeah they do fantastic. Um, in the case study, we had an organization that was doing their own server in house. It, it was very costly. So a lot of organizations just won't even touch some, you know, a platform, you know, a, a yeah. so they're, they're going to roll their own anyhow. So this becomes. And, and a lot of times, we'll we'll go into we'll go into uh, organizations where they want to actually run their own. They they have a mandate for running stuff on AWS. So we will help them. And like I was saying, there was there was one. Uh, organization, government organization we're working with recently that had spent uh, four months and three people trying to do a Drupal deployment and, uh, and they, they actually timed us when we went in there and it was 17 minutes and we weren't timing ourselves, they, they timed us and I was like, oh, you know, so, yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like really the question here, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're trying to get at is if you have the stomach for slash need to cut down on paying somebody else's margin slash willingness to roll your own, do this. Right. If you need to offload your complexity to somebody who promises to give you a button to push and you can deploy, you're going to pay a premium for it. Is that what you're saying? Uh, pretty much, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> that's, the yeah. that's the state of Drupal yeah. hosting today, yeah. right? Yeah. So, OK, I just wanted to clarify that. More technical, fun question. Um, your architecture diagram is nice and complicated and with many overlapping boxes. And it's uh, not my diagram. I just want to, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah if, I, I just want to, like, if I were to draw it, it'd be more complicated. So, yeah, I, I just want to point I've out. drawn many complicated. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I get really excited and get carried away. So this, um, this is really good. To, to grind the favorite acts of mine, you could probably, some of that is based on the fact that you still need bind mounted storage, right? If you really wanted to go multi-region, for instance, I don't think you can do that on uh, elastic block storage multi-region, right? So at that point, you have to get more complicated. But the, the storage becomes the limiting factor? No, no. There's a, there's a multi-region EFS now. So that's a, that's a new thing. And uh, you, can, you can use that as well. So, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's brand new. So it's something that uh, that was that was brought up with the with the region failure, and uh, that's something that AWS has been working on. So, yeah, but but you're right. The storage was was the was the uh, thing that was limiting factor in going multi-region. 
and with multi-region EFS, that, that becomes possible because there's already multi-region uh, Aurora or, and you know, global Aurora database, and uh, there's the global accelerator. So using those, we were, were able to set up the multi-region multi infrastructure with it. I have a question over here. Yeah. Hey, Slim. Hey. Uh, um, my understanding about Fargate using that over at ECS uh, is that it's cheaper, but they might sh the Amazon like kind of reserves the right to shut down your instances. Is that a is that a risk in this architecture? Uh, so so what we do is we run multiple containers, and when they shut down, it's like it's we're, we're, it's designed for failure. Right. So. Uh, and, and underlying, we actually use, uh, in, in most instances, unless, unless the clients object to it, uh, when we do our implementation, we actually use, use spot, spot instances too. Because oh, yeah, right. in a spot instance, you know, you're paying $70 for on-demand, in spot instance, you're paying $7 a month. Right. right? So, so we use a bunch of spot instances, and instead of running one container on an on-demand, we run two containers on two spot instances. Right, or we'll run multiple containers on multiple spot instances. And if they go away, it's, uh, it's designed for it to go away. And, uh, and you end up saving a ton of money that way. And it's built for redundancy and uh, high availability comes with it. And, and you get, essentially, you, from that design, you, you're able to actually serve more traffic too. So. Great, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm curious about uh, dev uh, instances and like how much it takes to spin one up, what it costs when you're not using it, and like is it very convenient to spin things up on demand as needed, and you know much cost savings along those lines for sites that may not be on for weeks at a time, but others would be. It's uh, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's pennies, right? So. Uh, if you're, I mean, depending on how much you're running it. So, um, and I have to be like, I have to tell you how we run it, right? Like we, we run our, we spin up dev instances on, uh, I'll use some terms here, but we use dev, we spin up dev instances on dev sites on spot instances and we use EBS for storage. Uh, EBS is their elastic block storage. And, and with uh, spot instances, when if, even if the dev instance goes down, even if the dev site goes down, the data is not lost. And we automatically spin up a new, it automatically spin up a new spot instance. And with that, you could just pick it up. But, so it takes about five minutes. So if the spot instance goes down, you know, you just go get a coffee or something. Like that. <laughs> and, then, and then you come back and then it's back up again. So, so it happens once in a while, but Spot instances save, can save you a ton of money, um, but some clients want to run it on, on either on reserved instances or, uh, you know, they, they, depending on their infrastructure, they'll, they'll do, they'll say, I want reserved infrastructure or they'll want spot infrastructure, so. And a question over here. Yeah. Hey, um, a couple of questions around performance. Uh, you said that you did this uh, initial load testing, which was artificial. And I'm just curious, did you find that reality pretty much matched your, um, yeah, your initial tests with, with artificial load? Um, and do you find in reality that there's, that while performance on average is fairly good, you occasionally get like, you know, the 99th percentile is quite long, you know, quite long tail? Yeah, we, we actually took reality and, and we tripled reality. Okay. Uh, it was uh, we we blew reality away. So it was it was all like it was all tests. So we just took reality and just like. So you just had a yeah. much higher load than anticipated yeah. to get around. Yeah. Just to see yeah. just to see if the infrastructure would handle it. Okay. Uh, and, and and that was one. You know, it was something that we had to satisfy. We had to satisfy them. You know, and yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, another question, if I may, just like. Everything sounds so wonderful here. Was there anything that didn't go amazingly? Was there something that you're like, oh, this will be easy, and actually it was surprisingly tough, like any gotchas or, or you know, foot guns that you, you, you encountered? 
we we had some hiccups with like blue green deployments and uh, and uh, we had some hiccups with the rollbacks and stuff like that, especially when it came to databases, right? Uh, but those were those were things that we had to work with them and figure out because those were hiccups we had during testing. So so it was sorted out by the time you actually you know, went live. It was it was sorted out it was sorted out uh, in the long run. Uh, but but when we were doing when we were doing testing, it was uh, it was a difficult process, just to just to do the blue green and uh, rollbacks. That was that was that was the most time consuming thing, is yeah. to figure out how to do that. Would it be rude to have one more question? You're not. <laughs> um, like long term maintenance, I'm thinking here. So you mentioned we just have this new service from AWS. Um, over time, do you anticipate that? You need a certain level of knowledge of AWS services so that as you main, you know, I, I appreciate that once you've deployed, all things are good right now. But if you want, you know, you don't have the Pantheon or the platform who's kind of looking after things for you and making sure that maybe five years later you're using a different service from the one you were using before because it's more appropriate. Do you, and do you feel that if you go this route, you, you ought to have someone on board who's kind of aware of and keeping an eye on AWS as part of kind of the maintenance, even though you're not necessarily doing much, but to have that understanding rather than black boxing it completely, if that makes sense? Yeah, we, we do it for our clients, right? But if you're rolling your own, then, then yeah, you need to stay, I would say you need to stay up to date. What, what I talk, what I showed here is something you can create and get started with. Uh, if you want to go in that direction, then I would encourage you to, you know, learn more about AWS and, uh, and you know, be, be involved more with it. So, uh, but you can't, you can't just stand it up and walk away from it. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to ask about multi-site or not necessarily specifically Drupal multi-site. Uh, as it's supported by Drupal Core, but like hosting multiple sites in this kind of configuration. Is that something you have, you've tried or do you have any experience with? Yeah, so these guys had, uh, these guys had uh, 50 sites with the same code base. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so we've done that with, uh, with, with this, um, on this project. There's another uh, university we were working with that had uh, 700 sites. Uh, so with the same code base, so we we did, you know, we did a setup of that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 possible. Uh, it's it's not it's not difficult to do. It's a uh, it's just a different setup than uh, what you would find on Acquia or Platform SH or something like that. Uh, did were you able to leverage a lot of the same infrastructure, uh, like? And just like add additional database instances for that kind of growth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Each each site had its own had had its own database essentially. Yeah. And since Salim doesn't want to do shameless self promotion while I walk across the room, uh, a lot of the th problems they've solved, um, you know, for for clients, they've rolled back into you know service offerings. So the blue green blue green solution was was made, and now it's an offering. Hey, um, maybe first the question that you asked. Yes, I can say I'm CTO of Amazy. We use. Pretty much exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Um, one question though, you talked about like fully managed. There's still stuff that you have to manage. Like for example, you're gonna use a PHP Docker image that you need to make sure, like let's say there's a PHP security issue coming out, AWS will not update your PHP Docker image for you. That's something whoever, manage, <laughs> whoever manages it. So. How many people are actively monitoring and managing, maintaining this infrastructure, even though a lot is managed by AWS for yeah. you? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. So thank you for that. Um, some clients have the people, they have the teams to manage that. And some clients will actually have their own images that they want to manage. So we are able to launch their infrastructure and their images on their accounts. We manage everything in our clients' accounts. So, so we don't manage anything in our accounts, we manage everything in their account. And, and a lot of times they'll come to us and say, we've got this infrastructure and we've got these images, we want you to manage that for us. So we'll do that for them as well. Um, 
but but a lot of times they'll have they'll have their own teams. If they're if we're managing it for them, then uh, then it's you know we'll we'll take care of it. But it's uh, generally it's not that difficult to to update the like if we just need to rebuild the containers and redeploy you know a new version of the container and the new version has has the fixes in them. So. Right, right. So that's that's essentially that's managed by the SLA, or you know the expectation that the client has if they want to do it, if they want us to do it, if they want somebody else to do it. We we work with a lot of different government contractors, and uh, sometimes the contractors want to do it. So. As far as like local development, do you run a very similar like shape architecture locally? You just run a, a pen, like a PHP image, or what exactly do you guys oh, run locally? We, yeah, we don't use and on. If you're asking on Dev Panel, what I talked about was Cloud Cloud Nine. Um, for for the folks here who just want to do, you know, AWS directly themselves. Uh, if you're talking about Dev Panel, we actually do serverless for local dev environments as well, and we use uh, we give you vs code in a browser and we give you php my admin in a browser but that's that's all running on serverless environment and it's it's all you know it's all through that point click control panel uh, so but that's that's if you have dev panel uh, if you don't have dev panel there's the cloud nine is available through aws and you know it's it's a very good product so yeah. is there a short question by chance did you tail in um, if you're interested in doing a boff on this and getting together to talk about things, uh, uh, yeah, you'll bring it up in the serverless channel on Slack as well. Um, if you are not going to do AWS because you can't stand it, uh, and you find some resources about uh, Google Cloud or IBM or what have you, or Azure, and you want to share those in the serverless channel on uh, Drupal, Drupal Slack, that would be fantastic as well. Yeah, so thank you for, for being here. Thank you. I want to thank Doug Ban as well. <laughs>